Diabetes mellitus by itself contains a lot of types based on the source or the origin of the trouble and also how the mechanism changes the whole biochemical pathways. On that basis, the two major types are type 1, type 2. Then we have the concepts of Moody Lana. Remember, type 1 was initially called as insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. Type 2 was initially called as non insulin diabetes mellitus. Remember, the concept of LADA, the origin of the concept of LADA is the reason why they have stopped using the concept of non insulin dependent diabetes or insulin dependent diabetes. Now they just call it as type 1 and type 2. Why, why such a kind of obligation happens? Think about it. Type 1 is about deficiency of insulin. While people generalize saying that in type 2 there is resistance to insulin. But if you dig deeper, you'll also understand one thing that not only type 2 is made of resistance, even in type 2 you can look for insulin deficiency. Because there are conditions in type 2 where the beta cells present in the islands of pancreas are not able to release insulin because of which insulin release is a failure, because of which insulin levels will be lesser. But here in case of type 2 where people think about resistance, remember this is a concept of end organ resistance towards insulin. Now why do I specify the biochemical basis here? Remember one thing, if I say resistance to insulin at the level of end organs happen, then the primary function of insulin is a failure. The primary function of insulin is uptake of glucose into the cells. For example, I have red 4. This red 4 is a receptor like transporter that is present deep inside the cells. But when insulin comes and binds on the surface of the insulin receptor, the signaling pathways will activate things in such a way that red 4 present in the cell will move up towards the wall of the cell or the membrane of the cell. Because of which this will be called as upregulation of red 4 transporters. So insulin is a must for upregulation of the blood flow transporters in insulin sensor tissues. But what happens in endogenous resistance to insulin? Insulin will come and sit here on the receptor and they ask the blood flow to go towards the membrane. They do not respond. They become disobedient. Because they become disobedient, insulin is failing in its ultimate process of helping glucose travel inside. Because glucose does not travel inside, you have hyperglycemia, a very common concept. But think about the concepts of Diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. In the latest editions of Harrison, they have done away with the word called as coma. Previously, people thought it was DKA versus hyperosmolar coma. The coma is the word that has been done away with in case of Harrison. Right now, they are using the simple words hyperosmolar, and that osmolarity is because of glucose. It is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. And if you ask me, DKA is common, which kind of diabetes? You yourself will be answering and saying that it will be very common in type 1. So type 2 is known for hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state. These two are acute complications of diabetes. It is type 1 or type 2 respectively. Also remember, you have something called as chronic complications of diabetes. We'll discuss that later. Now consider this, sir. DKA versus HOHS. Why DKA is very common in type 1 and not very common in type 2? Think about the concept. In case of type 1, insulin deficiency is obvious. Insulin is not present in much quantities. And also remember, insulin is the superstar hormone. This superstar hormone has a very important significant action on carbohydrate metabolisms, protein metabolisms and lipid metabolisms. Multiple pathways which are cornered by insulin have actually been coming under arrest because of type 1 where there is deficiency. So that would mean to say the glucose uptake is not happening, point number one. Because glucose is not entering inside, glycolysis is not happening, point number two. Because glycolysis is not happening, there is no ATP, point number three. Also remember, insulin has equal failure on lipid metabolism also. Insulin is an important hormone which inhibits another enzyme called as hormone sensitive lipase. This hormone sensitive lipase is always kept under suppression by the hormone insulin. And what do you mean by HSL? Hormone sensitive light base means the hormone is insulin. So this light base is sensitive to this particular hormone called as insulin. So in the presence of insulin, light base keeps its mouth shut. But in case of type 1 diabetes, because insulin is done away with, this HSL gets activated. Because HSL gets activated, it will break down the lipid pathways. It can bring down catabolic pathways in lipid metabolism. Adipose tissue will actually start
start making its own triglycerides because of which free fatty acids will increase. When free fatty acids increase, also remember there is insulin deficiency because of which gluconeogenesis is happening. When gluconeogenesis is happening, oxaloskate has been used up. Remember, when free fatty acids are in excess, when they burn down to become acetyl-CoA, you expect this acetyl-CoA to enter into TCA cycle. But TCA cycle will always happen when acetyl-CoA will have its partner called as oxaloskate. Just now I told you in case of type 1 diabetes, when you have diabetic state, oxaloskate has been shunted towards gluconeogenesis because of no availability of oxaloskate. Only acetyl-CoA will be available. It will not be able to enter into TCA cycle. If it does not enter into TCA cycle, then acetyl-CoA has two other pathways. One is cholesterol synthesis, the other one is ketone body synthesis. But remember, insulin is a must for activation of hmg coa reductase and synthase. Because insulin is deficient, there is no cholesterol pathway. Because there is no cholesterol pathway, this pathway is also shunted. We have only one more pathway called as ketone body formation. So automatically, in case of type 1 diabetes, because of absence of the insulin, activation of HSL, like in metabolism gives you free fatty acid, that gives you cell coa which does not produce a or cholesterol pathway, it enters into the ketone bodies. Diabetic ketoacidosis happens when these ketone bodies are in excess and the pH value falls. Now, if you ask me why the same DKA is not very common in case of type 2 diabetes mellitus, remember, in some conditions you may have insulin deficiency of type 2, but most of type 2 are resistance, end organ resistance to insulin. So it means insulin is either normally present or it may be in excess also. When insulin is in excess or a normal condition, remember, insulin's first failure is always towards carbohydrates, slowly the failure shifts towards proteins and then towards lipids. So, the presence of insulin, the mere presence of insulin will only be reflecting first on the carbohydrate metabolism because of which you have hyperglycemia and hyperosmolarity. But still, lipid is under control of this particular insulin present here because of which your free fatty acids will not be in excess because HSL is still under control. I repeat, when you have insulin excess or normal, because you still have control on the HSL, HSL will not be activated, it will be kept inhibited because of its free fatty acids not increased, because of which there is no acetyl coa because of which there is no ketone body. So DKA is less common in case of type 2 diabetes. If you ask me whether DKA is possible, yes it is possible. In conditions where deficiency of insulin happens, then DKA is a possible mechanism in case of type 2 diabetes. So, to understand a simple concept of whether DKA or HOGS is capable of happening in which type of diabetes, you should be having some kind of logic in case of biochemical mechanisms. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please post your questions for further discussion.